So I got a pretty good start on the flooring here in the new addition. I also have the ceiling done. So it's the same type of ceiling that we have in the existing cabin. So um, it's just birch plywood, pretty cheap. And then where they meet, just run two by fours on the seams. This stuff's pretty thin, so on the seams it gets kind of, you know, wavy, so the 2 by 4s clean that up and make it nice and tight and give it a, a better look. But yeah, pretty cheap way to do a ceiling. Probably not everybody's thing, but I think it looks decent and don't have to mud and tape it, so big fan of that. But now I'm going to keep it going. I'll probably do a few more rows, and then i got to get all this stuff out of here, clean this up, get this place spotless so I can finish the floor. It's pretty nice being that even this point, having the ceiling up and insulated, because now this entire thing is closed up, dried in, insulated, which means it'll heat. So it's always nice when you get to that point, knowing that it's at least going to be warm. But I'm going to keep plugging away here and, yeah, knock out this flooring. Sierra's been gone teaching dance for like three or four days, and when she left, I didn't have anything done on the ceiling. So now it's insulated, sheeted. Pretty much done besides trim, and we'll have the living room kitchen area floored, which will be pretty sweet. So it's going to look a lot different when she gets home. Um, I'm pretty excited to see her reaction because there's been a lot of changes since she left. So all this stuff here is all scrap wood, so this can be burned through the wood stove this winter. The key to starting a fire with gas is you want to let it soak in a little bit, give it like five minutes or so, then that eliminates the woof that blows up in your face. Good morning. Uh, I got all that stuff burned last night. All that stuff that I burned was stuff that had a bunch of nails in it. I didn't want to mess around with pulling them or they had, you know, poly on them. So I didn't really want to burn them through the wood stove. So it was good to get all that cleaned up. Um, I saved all the like cutoffs from, you know, studs and things like that. So I had a pretty good pile of those to burn through the wood stove this winter. But this morning we're going to head over to Ely actually and uh, go pick some blueberries. They have a blueberry festival going on this weekend. So it should be pretty fun. There's like activities to do, but the main reason we're going is we want to pick a couple ice cream pails of blueberries, hopefully. So, so hopefully we find a nice patch of wild blueberries and can bring some home. Blueberry strudel. It's really busy. Yeah, it's really I thought, busy. I thought uh, tomorrow everybody would be here, but... Well, I'm sure there's going to be a ton of people here tomorrow on Saturday. So here it is, the Ely Blueberry Festival. So there's, yeah, a lot of food trucks, a lot of vendors, pretty cool stuff, but 
we have old Skeeter Boy with, so <clears throat> we didn't really plan on doing any of this stuff. Uh, but Sierra's gonna grab us something out of the food truck right here, and then we're gonna go pick some blueberries. So Sierra got us each a gyro, some cheese curds, and then she got a funnel cake. So our plan is we're gonna drive the Echo Trail. It goes from Ely all the way to Ord. It's a remote road that goes through the woods, just a dirt road. Uh, there's nothing, but it's pretty much all public land. So we'll stop and hit some trails, uh, just park on the side of the road and see if we can get into any blueberries. Found some right here on the side of the road. Not much, but there's a few. Some more right up in here too. Well, down this trail, we didn't have a whole lot of luck. We, we got some, but not finding, you know, a big patch or anything, they're pretty sporadic. So we're gonna uh, head up the road and try another spot. How many do we got so far? Um, like, should we, we should probably just eat them? No. <laughs> here we found a good clump. Pretty good patch right here. There's some there. Bunch in here, so this should keep me busy for a little bit. And then Sierra went up the road up that way. She found a good patch too. Some of these are pretty tiny, but the tiny ones have a really good flavor. You have more in your bucket than mine? Uh, I think so. It takes a lot to get a pail, doesn't it? It does, yeah. There's some that are pretty little. A lot of them are pretty little, but they're tasty. Sucks when you drop them. These little guys here. Here's a nice clump. Well, we found a pretty good patch on the side of the road here. We're starting to fill up the pails. It takes a lot, a lot of picking to fill up an ice cream bucket, but uh, Skeeter's in the van right now because it is hot out and he's just kind of sitting here panting. So he was pretty miserable. So we got him in there with the AC, but I think we're gonna leave this spot pretty quick and head on up and try to find another patch. You do, you take really good care of not getting sick in yours. I know, I liked mine pretty. Well, we Half got a pail? Way. No. Uh, a quarter. Well, like a quarter. Yeah. No, uh, a third of the way. third of the way, I bet. Well, this was a productive stop here, but we pretty much picked this place over, so we're going to head up the road a little bit. Well, that was fun. We got just about a full ice cream pail here. It's about two thirds full. We're gonna go pick some more uh, in a couple of days, I think. It's supposed to be really hot today, but uh, it'd be sweet to get two full ice cream pails of blueberries and then start picking raspberries too. But that's kind of the goal is to get two full pails of blueberries and then a pail or two of raspberries would be awesome. We actually have a couple pretty good patches of wild raspberries right here on our property. So we'll see if we can get a pail out of that. Otherwise we'll head into the natural forest a little bit and. Um, see if we can't find some in there. But yeah, the addition is coming along nice. I mean, yeah, the ceiling's done, we're insulated, and we've got a good start in the flooring. I stopped right here because we have to lay out our kitchen now. Uh, we're gonna have an island counter right here, and our sink will be built into that. So there was no point in flooring right here. And then, yeah, the counter on this wall will come out, you know, somewhere in here. So we gotta get all this laid out and uh, get it drawn out on the floor so we know where everything's going and then we can start building that and then we'll wrap up the flooring So it's coming along. There's not a whole lot left to do besides building the kitchen now 
wrapping up the flooring and then it's uh, I got to run a little bit of plumbing but then that's pretty much it for this besides trim so also we are going to run another wood stove in here that wood stove that we have in the main cabin the existing one that heats that area fine uh, but I'm sure it'll heat this too like if it's 20 degrees or above but on the really cold nights I'd feel good about having another stove in here you know another heat source so well, we're going to go ahead and put another one in here so we'll run two wood stoves and it's kind of nice too just to have the since this will be our living room now it's kind of nice to just watch a fire you know for the ambiance so i was looking at wood stoves from northwoods fabrication uh made right here in minnesota awesome wood stoves and he's got all kinds of models but i think the woodsman is going to work well he has a wood a woodsman xl and a woodsman xxl but i think the woodsman will be good in here this addition is 512 square feet and the woodsman heats 800 square feet um, so I think it'll be plenty. But yeah, I was looking at the dimensions of it. So uh, I kind of laid it out and I think that woodsman's going to be perfect for in here. Those stoves are awesome too. You know, they have a nice flat top for cooking. So you can throw soup on there or coffee pot or boiling water or whatever. So uh, I think that'll be perfect for in here. So like I said, really the next step on the addition is laying out the kitchen, which will be a lot of fun. That same lumber yard where we got all that rough cut lumber, um, they, they make like countertops and bar tops there. So I think we're going to get our countertops made there too. So I'm going to hit that guy up and see what it would cost to get, you know, a couple wood slabs made because that would be awesome for countertops. And like I said, all that stuff is milled locally here, so it's all local wood. And I think that would look really nice in our kitchen. So right now I'm pretty much waiting on permits for the new uh, cabin build. I had to get a permit for the outhouse and every county is different when it comes to permits. Uh, this one is kind of annoying. It's like, you know, I got you can't even start your cabin until you get the permit for the outhouse. And, you know... That's going to take a week or two before I get that. And then once I get that, then I can get the, or apply for a permit for the cabin. So it's kind of this whole ordeal, not exactly a speedy process for just a cabin in an outhouse, but you know, what do you do? Oh, there, I'd probably just build one without a permit, but you know, since I put myself on the internet, I kind of have to do everything the right way. So, but it kind of works out because I can just hammer out this addition, get that hundred percent done. And then we are done here and yeah, I can spend sometime in August working on the new place. But yeah, since it's berry season, we're gonna pick berries for a little bit here and take advantage of that resource. Well, other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.